Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots. Who are your shills, dust, lasers, peasants, vassals, minions, ladies? I'm a useful idiot. Welcome. Uh, I want to talk about today is the big lie about the gender pay gap. And this is uh, pretty common knowledge. Uh, this uh, whole idea that women make 77 cents for every dollar a man earns has been uh, easily discredited for years. And there's a number of good articles and a number of good books. And, uh, this, uh, but this mythology continues to live on. And I bring it up now because it's another one of the lies that we heard at the uh, State of the Union address by Barack Obama. And I was su uh, surprised uh, somewhat that he brought up this uh, statistical uh, fabrication once again. And the quote is, uh, Barack Obama said, quote, Today's women make up about half our workforce but they still make 77 cents for every dollar man earns. That is wrong, and in 2014, it's an embarrassment, unquote. But uh, I would proffer that the embarrassment is the, the, the idea that Barack Obama um, is still throwing around um, this fallacy, this lie, this fabrication. It reminds me of an anecdote about uh, statistics being like a bikini. Uh, what it covers up is uh, essential. What it reveals is interesting. And um, this is uh, certainly true in this case. And uh, so the big lie about the gender pay gap, uh, there's a great article, I'll attach it below here, and it explains it as succinctly as it can be done. And uh, that's what I like to do, so um, I'm going to be using this article as a guideline. So essentially what they've done is uh, the gender pay gap uh, has been done by sim uh, taking simple, simply the difference between the average earnings of all men and women working full-time. So that's the formula used to devise this 77 cents for every dollar uh, idea. Uh, the difference between the average earnings of all men and all women working full-time. And you can see the pitfalls already. It does not account for differences in occupations. It doesn't account for differences in positions. It doesn't account for different educational levels, it doesn't uh, account for different job tenure, and it, it doesn't even account for hours worked per week. Um, so when all relevant facts are taken into consideration, the wage gap actually narrows to about five cents, and that could be just about anything. So, uh, so there you have it. Um, and uh, it just so happens that a, a study compiled by the Georgetown University Center on Education and the Workforce and it uh, figured out that uh, the 10 most well-paying university majors are dominated by men. And that's uh, petroleum engineering, pharmaceutical sciences, math and computer science, aerospace engineering, chemical engineering, electrical engineering, marine engineering, mechanical engineering, metallurgical engineering, and mineral engineering. All dominated by men. Those are the top 10 most well-paying university majors and degrees. And granted, so a certain amount of them have a large female contribution. Pharmaceutical sciences, 48% uh, are men, so that means 52% uh, are women. And um, But most of these are dominated 90, 97%, 89%, 88%, 87%, all do dominated by men. So that, that alone, just the, the college majors and then uh, we look at the same study, and it has the 10 least paying uh, university majors, and they are dominated by women. And those are counseling psychology, early childhood education, religious vocations, human services, community organizations, social work, drama and theater arts, studio arts, communication disorders, visual and performing arts, and health preparation. Um, and once again, the spectrum is fairly fairly large. For example, drama and theater arts is 60% women, so there is a significant male contribution, 40%. But a lot of these, 94%, 88%, 97%, 81%, all do dominated by women, and all traditionally paying a lot less. And they, they don't pay less uh, just because women are doing it. The, these are just uh, vocations that pay less, and uh, women are drawn to it. And one of the things you notice between these two lists is that uh, all the uh, work that women are drawn to are, are to to uh, work with other people, and uh, there's a social component. And the, all the jobs that uh, men dominate are um, 
now, tend to be a little more asocial. All these uh, engineering jobs, uh, generally where they're working on their own or with a small group. So, uh, so there's a, a huge disparity there. And um, so there's no, uh, you can see by bringing, bringing it up this way, there's no real, uh, there's no real way to argue with it, and it's certainly not making any value judgments. Those are just the, uh, the highest paying jobs and the lowest paying jobs coming out of college and who tends to gravitate towards those degrees. Um, so it's just the, uh, the nature of things. So, uh, so let's remember the uh, big lie about the gender pay gap. It doesn't exist. It is merely another political tool to divide and conquer. So they even pit uh, genders against each other, and there's a lot of ways that's done. And this has a long history. I mean, we can go all the way back to um, Edward Bernays, who was responsible for getting uh, women to smoke. Uh, tobacco companies were, were, were interested in having a large sector of the population uh, using their product. And Edward Bernays uh, ended up uh, creating a uh, marketing ploy where they were called tor freedoms, torches of freedom. And uh, women were uh, using it to express their freedom and independence. And so it became a national rage. And uh, the tobacco industry uh, got an entire new sector and audience. And uh, we still see these same ploys being used, entire industries built up to cater to women. And it's a, a corporate exploitation. Um, and it's not specific, specifically male exploitation. It's just corporate exploitation in general and um, and we see this uh, uh, exploited in other areas of uh, uh, feminist uh, mythology that's used for divide and conquer as well and that includes the idea that uh, uh, young women are not afforded the same uh, luxuries in, in uh, high school in attention from and teachers and uh, it seems to me everyone knows that uh, women do just fine in school um, and that uh, also, that uh, women are, are dominating college now. I think the percentage of women going to college is 56% now. So uh, far more women are going to college now. So that's not really an issue. And uh, some of these other scary statistics that one in four women will be raped by the time they're in college are preposterous. Um, and that number has been uh, debunked. And the idea that 30% of uh, emergency room visits are for domestic violence I'm sorry to laugh, but it's also preposterous. Um, it's more like 1%. And none of this is to, to excuse uh, any, any, any of these uh, oppressive uh, gestures towards women or violence towards women. Uh, and in fact, what, what I would suggest is that the uh, uh, predominance of these mythologies is actually doing more damage to the, the realities of violence against women and, um, and the like. Uh, because it uh, becomes a little more frivolous um, when you look behind the, the, the uh, statistics and find out that uh, there's a lot of scare tactics being used. And that's a discredit to all of us. So, uh, so there we have it. The big lie about the gender pay gap. Sorry to break it to you. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one too.